friends, and welcome to another Ask Zach. Today we're going to have what I call a rut-busting lesson for you. Uh, yeah, hope you are, you are all doing well today. So, uh, yeah, I think this comes from my own, you know, kind of experience of sitting around playing guitar, especially over the last year. And uh, we can get overly dependent on... Uh, outside inspiration like watching videos and lessons and stuff like that and those things are great but this is just kind of a tool for when you're sitting around and you're like I'm playing the same you know silly things over and over again and what can I do to kind of you know bust out of that in a simple way and to take things that you already know and to reuse them and uh, you know kind of take them apart and put them back together in interesting ways and it kind of makes your playing sound more like you. Yeah. So, all right. So let's take a lick that's kind of tired, uh, or at least, you know, you know, it gets played a lot and, you know, we're really used to hearing it, which would be, you know, something like this. Yeah, and the key of B. So immediately I started thinking, okay, what can I do to make that lick more interesting? Well, I could take it down an octave. So, because also that's one thing that we get, you know, as guitar players, we get so used to playing things in certain geometric shapes. And it's like, that's the way you play that, right? Because it's like you go, you know, if you, if you want to do it in the key of E. So... But if you take it down an octave and you figure out a different fingering for it, all of a sudden it has a lot more usages. So let's take it back in B, all of a sudden you have. Now automatically that sounds more interesting than the other way. Uh, it's different because your ear is so used to hearing it, you know, played up, you know, in that kind of higher fingering. So then if you take it to another part of the neck, but still keeping it in that lower octave, uh, you know, you can get some interesting things. So I'm gonna go to the neck pickup and just make things fun. I'm gonna turn the tremola on, or as this says, vib, that's what the foot switch says. <laughs> so here we go, B, uh, B blues. <laughs> Okay, so there, that whole thing that I played was inspired by taking that kind of run-of-the-mill, you know, kind of blues lick, taking it down an octave, and utilizing this open B string that you have on the guitar. So here's the fingering. Uh, turn the tremolo off, as fun as it is. And of course, because you're playing a Telecaster, which, you know, or some type of Fender guitar, uh, you can play all these low string things and the voicings come through when you play chordally. You know, like if you're playing some other kind of guitar, this might not come through the... And that's just, uh, you know, that's an F sharp, you know, seven uh, in kind of a fun... So again, slow, the lick is... fun little kind of, uh, you know, bass lick. And then just climbing up on, you know, kind of a normal kind of, uh, you know. But it sounds better if you do like some double stops on some of it. So you go... Um, 
slowly. So again, all of that came from just taking that lick and taking it down an octave and then finding an interesting place you know, to play it. And then this other stuff comes from it. And, and to me, when you play blues like that and you, and you play it that low, it starts sounding like a baritone guitar and it just kind of pulls your ear a little bit, just makes it sound a little more interesting. You know, keeping with that same lick and just, you know, kind of some other things you can do with that. Uh, if, you, if you go to the key of G, again, you've got an open string. And so then you get this kind of thing. That's cool. Uh, and then, of course, the thing I played at the intro of the show was kind of a, what I think of as a, a little Richard, you know, kind of Lucille kind of you know, rhythm, you know, thing. And you have that. And that slow is, again, it's that same thing, that same B lick, but now you're using it as the five chord in this other thing. Again, this is about take what you know and then use it in all sorts of different ways. So here we go. Again, just, you know, finding cool ways to reuse, you know, to recycle licks as it were. And so this will really keep you going is, you know, when you're practicing, think about some lick that you play a lot and then figure out different ways of using it. You know, use it in, you know, instead of using it as the one chord or we're playing over the one chord, use it over the five or what have you, but find, you know, take it down an octave, use open strings. If you've been using open strings, find a way to play it in, uh, you know, in without open strings. So let's see, here's another thing. Uh, here's a, a lick that uh, I would play a lot, kind of like an ending lick on, on the low strings. And it's like. Okay, that's, that's cool. But I never thought of using that higher up the neck or even learning like a different fingering. Well, then you find out, you know, it's right here. Or, so all of a sudden you have this lick that now it's a great, you know, it's a great soloing tool and you can use that and then go into all sorts of other things. Or let's think about something, you know, like the, uh, the bluegrass uh, lick, the, uh, the Lester flat, you know, lick, which, you know, of course in G it, but in, you know, let's, let's take it to E and go. Okay. Well, let's say we just keep playing that same lick up the neck. Well, it starts to sound like something. All of a sudden that's, that's great. And then you could even, instead of landing on the one again, that E note up on the 12th fret, you could, you could land on the, on the D and that moves you into your, into your four chord, into your A. So you, So, all sorts of things that are just right there under your fingers. You know, so, when you're practicing, think about those things that you play over and over again, you know, that you've gotten into a rut with, and take those things and use them as a tool to grow and move them into other keys, move them into other areas in the neck. You know, be your own guitar teacher. Yeah, it's great to take lessons. It's great, you know, to watch videos, but there's this aspect of we can get to where we allow our minds to get weak and we become spoon fed. I'll give a, a little example. I've always loved uh, the guitar part 
on uh, William Bell's I Forgot to Be Your Lover. And uh, funnily enough, uh, I found out that that guitar part was actually played by Booker T. Jones, you know, the, the organist for Booker T. and the MGs. And uh, I confirmed it. J.D. Simo had told me about that. And then also I confirmed it with John Leventhal, who produced William Bell and, uh, and talked to William about it. And uh, that was a guitar part that I've loved. And I played it in the uh, Esquire video. And then I'll just play it real quick right now. That's a really cool guitar part that I never did take the time to learn on my own. Instead, you know, I just kind of kept, you know, dragging my feet and, and, you know, thinking, okay, at some point someone's going to make a video showing how to, how to play this. And they did. And so I learned it that way. So nothing wrong with that, but you learn so much more when you figure things out on your own. So, uh, yes, pick the, you know, pick out things, learn them yourself, play melodies. That's a, a great thing that I did, you know, especially over the holidays. Uh, I would take, you know, Santa Claus is coming to town or whatever, and just pick out the melody on the guitar and then figure out how to play it like it harmonized in thirds or six or what have you. So those are all great uh, tools to, uh, to get you going and get you out of ruts. And, uh, you know, yes, it's good to get inspiration from videos and lessons and things like that, but also you need to, uh, be able to uh, bust yourself out of ruts and uh, inspire yourself when you're sitting there on the guitar. All right, well, that's enough for the, uh, the uh, lesson part of the show. I wanted to end by uh, kind of a, just a, a note of uh, respect and honor to A.R. Dussessoir. So he was a French author and he passed away in late uh, 2020. And he wrote the Bibles when it came to, you know, guitar books, especially in the, in the eighties, this is considered by most telly guys, the, the Bible of, you know, of the history of the Telecaster. And, uh, and he, he wrote this and this is the one he did on the Strat and he did, um, he did, he wrote books on Gibson electrics, such a groundbreaking and important, uh, guitar author. So thank you, uh, Mr. <laughs> Uh, we're grateful for the, the work that you did. And these books are out of print now, uh, and people are, of course, about asking you know, crazy money for them. But uh, you can get it digitally on uh, Amazon, and I'll put a affiliate Amazon link in the, uh, in the description, because this is so worth uh, reading, even if it's digitally. Of course, if you can find one like at a used bookstore and pay a normal price instead of fifty dollars or whatever people are asking on ebay or amazon at this point i wouldn't do that all right guys well i hope you have a great week and i'll see you next time bye, -bye. Mm -hmm.